Amen. Amen. Uh, before I forget it, tonight at 5 o'clock um, at Leroy Martin's church, we will be having our community Thanksgiving service. We've got, uh, I think, 11 ministers from our community that are going to be there and bring people from their church. And uh, we're just going to celebrate together as a community uh, all that we have to be thankful for. And so that's 5 o'clock this evening at Leroy Martin's church. Life Builders Restoration Church International. So uh, keep that in mind for tonight. Would you go to the Lord with me in prayer this morning? Father, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you for all that you are and all that you do. God, we have so much to be thankful for. And today, God, I pray that you bring it to remembrance. God, that we, Lord, without you, without what you did on the cross, without what you did coming out of the grave, God, we would not be here to celebrate today, God. So we are thankful for you. God, I pray that our praise and our worship will be pleasing to you and that you will be exalted in this place. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, everybody shout it. Amen. Would you give the Lord a hand clap and shout of praise? He's 
more than enough. Come on, say it this morning. He's more than enough. Unity, is that all you got? Come on, give the Lord praise this morning. Jesus, 
Hallelujah, Jesus. You're worthy, Jesus. You're worthy, Jesus. You're worthy, Jesus. It's all for your glory, Lord. It's all for your glory, Lord. It's all about you, Jesus.
Thanksgiving week here. Great time to thank the Lord for all the blessings that is done. Uh, yes, you may have a seat uh, to our kids, least I forget. You can be free to go with Miss Pamela if you're from first to fifth grade. Uh, please go with Miss Pamela to Kids Church this morning. A few other announcements that I need to make note of tonight at five o'clock, there will be a community Thanksgiving service. It's going to be at uh, Pastor Leroy Martin's church, uh, Life Builders, which is over by, uh, just off Jackson Street, right across from Jackson Street, uh, Jackson Street uh, Church of Christ, uh, so Columbia County Ambulance Service, it's, it's right over in that area, so that'll be at 5 tonight, and we'd encourage you to uh, take the opportunity to go to that, there'll be lots of different churches that are going to be there. I was there when they made the program, and Pastor made sure we got lots of churches involved. Um, they're all, lots of pastors will be there with uh, just small little parts, but just a time for us as a body of Christ to get together as a group uh, that we usually don't see on Sundays. So just an opportunity to see some different folks. Again, that's at 5 tonight. Uh, Wednesday night, no church service. Uh, be preparing for uh, Thanksgiving, so we got Thanksgiving on Thursday, and uh, just spend some time with the family, and uh, encourage you to uh, look forward and, and doing that this this coming week. Uh, with that, let's pray, and then uh, Pastor come and share the word. I think I did hear Pastor mention. Uh,
Baby Ivy made it. Mike is glowing. Um, he, he said, man, it was, he, he just can't wait to get back across the street. Um, so uh, glad, glad Pastor could make it in. and uh, He's ready to get back and see that baby again. So uh, congratulations on that. Glad everybody's doing well. Well, let's pray and uh, we'll receive the word. Father, we just thank you for this morning. God, thank you for the opportunity to be here. Lord, just thank you. God, you've given us lots of things. And Lord, just help us to remember to be thankful for those. Thank you for our family. Thank you for our relationship we can have with you. Thank you, Jesus, for coming just to die for our sins and uh, to be with us. Lord, we just thank you. Help us to keep just gratitude in our hearts, Lord, to you and even towards others, Lord. Just thank you for the blessings that we have received, our jobs and uh, just uh, all that you've given us, Father. Thank you for that. Lord, bless our time here today. Bless pastors as he shares the word. Lord, draw us closer to you. Let us receive from you. Father, give us your wisdom and your guidance. Lord, we thank you and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would you give Pastor Shane a hand this morning? Do it just a little bit different this morning. Uh, would you just help me sing that chorus one more time? Here we go. Jesus paid. Jesus. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. One more time. Jesus paid. Jesus paid it God, as we get ready to celebrate Thanksgiving with our family and with our friends, help us to be reminded of all that we have to be thankful for. God, that because you died on the cross, that you bled, that you suffered, God, we have life and life forevermore. God, because of what you did on the cross, God, we are washed white as snow. God, if you don't do anything else for us, that is enough to be thankful for. We give you praise in Jesus' name, everybody said. Amen. Could you give the Lord praise this morning? Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Um, I'm going to share a brief word with you this morning entitled, A Thankful Heart. A Thankful Heart. Falls in theme with Thanksgiving. Uh, and how many of you want to have a thankful heart? I want to start by giving some thanks this morning. Uh, I want to say thank you to our board, our deacons, who uh, recognized that we needed a break and sent us for a break this week and uh, sent us to Waco, Texas, and we got to go see the Magnolia uh, District where Chip and Joanna Gaines from Fixer Upper has uh, literally transformed an area of Waco. And I wanted to bring that up uh, this morning uh, just to say how thankful we are that we get to serve this church and uh, get to serve with that board of deacons. And uh, can we give our deacons a hand this morning? Also, I want to say thank you to those who showed uh, just different ways, love and appreciation to me and our family. And uh, it really is a, uh, just an honor and a privilege to serve this church. And uh, I really do believe that we get to pastor the best group of people around. And so I really believe that. And I believe you chose a good place to worship the Lord this morning. Could you give the Lord praise one more time? That's my favorite thing about this church is you know how to praise, you know how to worship, and I want to say thank you for that. Uh, I wanted to bring up uh, Chip and Joanna. I was hoping I'd have a picture to show you of me and Chip uh, this morning, but it uh, didn't happen. We didn't see them. But uh, I want to just throw this out there, that family has completely transformed their city. That family has completely transformed their city. That, they haven't remodeled every house or anything like that. But from the moment you get close to Waco to the moment you get all the way through Waco, 
uh, which is where Baylor University is, there is construction. Just the entire town is under construction, the entire town. Roads are dug up. I mean, literally neighborhoods are, they are completely remodeling this town. And, uh, and we were told that before Chip and Joanna uh, began uh, revitalizing that town, that town was doomed for just failure that the whole place was just run down, and uh, there was no hope for that town. They saw no hope, but because one family took value in their community, uh, HGTV came in, and Chip and Joanna have been able to uh, revitalize parts of the town, which has started a fire under the rest of the town, and now that entire town is becoming new and renovated, and, uh, and, and they've just made a difference. And so one day we were, uh, we were there, and we were told that there was a free trolley that would take you any, you know, take you along the route to see all the things that Chip and Joanna had done. And so uh, we found a trolley stop, and Pamela and I are standing there, and uh, we see the trolley coming, and they say wave, and the trolley will stop. And so we're standing on the street corner of a bad area of town and uh, waiting for the trolley to come, and here it comes. And, boy, we're waving, and it just passes us right by. And there's a van right behind it uh, that says trolley system or whatever on it in our transit system. And we're like, oh, maybe they're going to stop. And we wave at them, passed us right by. And we're like, well, doggone, this is not nice. <laughs> and so there was a number that you could call. And, um, and so I called the trolley system. I said, hey, I don't know what we're doing wrong, but uh, we waved at two trolleys, and they passed us right by. And, uh, and they said, oh, no. And, and they said, hold on a minute. And uh, they got back on the phone, and they sent the supervisor of the trolley system to us in his own vehicle. And he escorted us privately around town. And so uh, I thought, how cool is that? You know, and uh, and he said he and Chip are buddies, and uh, he saw Chip. The way they met is uh, Chip recognized him uh, walking through town, recognized him as as the supervisor. Someone had told him about him, and Chip approached him and thanked him for all they did, and they've become friends and everything. And so he got to tell us about some stuff, and uh, and so he dropped us off at the Magnolia Table, which is Joanna Gaines' restaurant. And uh, dropped us off and said, okay, if you come and sit on this bench right here, a trolley will pick you up when you're finished. And, uh, and so we did that, and uh, we ate and went and sat on the bench in a trolley that was completely empty with our, like a full-size tour bus, basically, uh, that was completely empty, picked us up, took us back to our hotel, waited out in the parking lot for us, until we were ready to go somewhere else, and we just got to pick wherever we wanted to go, and they just took us around for free. I think that's favor of God right there. Can you give God praise for that? That was just a neat experience. We had our own personal escort uh, around Waco, and, uh, and we just thought that was uh, so awesome. It was worth being passed by twice. And so what the enemy meant for evil. God turned for the good of those who loved him. But also I wanted to say this, and I'm going to get into the message. Uh, Everything, everything that Chip and Joanna does, they do it with excellence. And they believe in that. They believe nothing's gaudy or over the top. It's just done with excellence. And, um, And they have challenged their community to follow suit. And so the places you go that have that the community has got in and uh, got on the on on board and uh, renovated everything is done with excellence and I really recommend uh, if you ever get a chance to go and uh, experience that uh, really it was motivating it was motivating uh, what can I do better and and you felt that everywhere you go no matter what level you're on in life you can do better can somebody say amen. And so uh, thank you again for that opportunity. Uh, I want to say also that I'm thankful for uh, those who kept our kids. (laughs) And uh, Alex and Cecilia had our babies 
uh, since Wednesday. And so we saw him for the first time this morning. And uh, I'm thankful for staff and leaders that uh, get behind us and, uh, and go with us and serve in, in a great way. Can we give all of our staff and our leaders a hand this morning? Thankful for you guys, thankful for grandparents who love on our kids and our babies, and uh, we are really blessed. You know, we are really blessed, and I'm not just talking about me and Pamela and our family. We are blessed. Aren't we blessed? And so I'm thankful, and uh, my prayer during this Thanksgiving season is that we be reminded of all that we have to be thankful for. I want to read a scripture to you, Colossians three fifteen through 17. It says, And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns, and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts toward God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Father, I pray that your word will speak to our hearts, change our lives today. In the name of Jesus, everyone said, amen. Look at your neighbor and say, I want a thankful heart. I'm going to go through three things briefly this morning. Number one, thankfulness is a condition of the heart. Thankfulness is a condition of the heart. And how many of you know when you're around a thankful person? You know that. You know that you're around someone who has who has a good heart. We were uh, we ate at a little place. And it was not connected to the gains at all. And uh, there was an Asian man that served us our food. And we were eating Thai food. And uh, this Asian man came up and uh, Pamela said, he has kind eyes, you know. And he really was. And we saw him. He uh, was getting ready to serve us. And there was a shelf, a metal shelf uh, in the little in the little area where he was, and he turned real fast and hit his temple right on that shelf. And you know, if you know, uh, I mean, hit it hard. And 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 he went down, and he was holding his holding his face, and you could tell he was really hurt. And uh, and he didn't cuss. <laughs> and he and he stood up, and he stood there for a minute, and he said, "It's okay, it's okay." And then he went back about his business, you know. And um, and she said, you know what? He just had kind eyes. And uh, you can tell when you're around someone with a healthy heart and someone with a thankful heart. And I believe that God wants to develop a thankful heart within each one of us. Luke 6.45 says, a good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart, and an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say flows from what is in your heart. This is where we get the scripture, out of the heart. Oh, boy, y'all are asleep this morning. (laughs) Push on your neighbor, say, wake, wake up. Out of the heart. The mouth speaks, right? And so this is where we get this uh, saying. It is that what you say flows from what is in your heart. Colossians 2, 6 through 7 says, Therefore, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught. Listen to this. Abounding in thanksgiving. So our scriptures are saying that, hey, it's what's stored up in your heart, uh, that those things, that's what's going to flow out. And uh, out of the good heart, we can produce good things. But I can guarantee you that if people are walking around spewing evil, they do not have a good heart. They don't have a healthy heart. They don't have a thankful heart. But someone who is, uh, every time you're around them, you feel better. 
Does anybody know somebody like that? Every time you're around, it's like you want to be around that person because they just make you feel, you may be down or discouraged, but somehow they pull some good out of the circumstances, out of the situations. And so I want to be around people like that. And, you know, we used to hear all the time, uh, you know, people say, ah, I just, I want friends. I, I need friends. Well, one of the easiest ways for you to gain friends is for you to be friendly. Right? Well, I would just want people to like me. Well, put some deodorant on, brush your teeth, and, and wear a smile. Right? And so there's some ways that this can happen. I could even pull a scripture. Faith without works is dead. You can believe God for friends, but until you start acting nice and friendly and people want to be around you. Listen, nobody wants to be around. Oh, I don't know about today. Well, I'm just making it, brother. You know, well, I'm going to go find me somebody else to hang around with. I lost my dog, I lost my wife, I lost my kids, I lost my money, I just don't know. My knees hurt, my elbows hurt, my back hurts, my head hurts. I can't stand it. When people post six scriptures in a row on Facebook, and the next thing is, I just, oh, life is just so hard, I just, you know, Everything's bad in my life. I don't know how I'm going to make it. You know, man, what a poor way to represent Jesus, all right? God wants you to be healthy in your heart so that people, listen, so that people can see, man, he, he's got some good stuff coming out. I want to be around. I want to be around Alex. He pulls some good out of me, right? I want to be around Kelly because you can't be around Kelly very long before you want to do good for somebody. Right? And look, and, and I'm telling the truth. You want to be around somebody that's going to pull you closer and pull you. And, and listen, we need to learn to open our eyes, look around, and realize that we have a lot to be thankful for. And when we do that, something begins to happen inside of you. And instead of having the mully grubs, does anybody know what that is? I just, I just remember my parents saying, why are you walking around in the mully grubs? I don't know what the mully grubs are. But nobody wants that, right? We want to be around somebody that's going to lift us up, make us feel a little better. That's one of the things about the Magnolia District. If you ever go, you're going to feel that everywhere you go. And there's things all over the place. Be kind. Be kind. Kindness, be kind. And and listen, there it's just the people like to be around people like that. And I'm convinced, and I'm gonna show you in a moment, that the Holy Spirit likes to be around people like that too. All right, let's look at this. It says abounding in thanksgiving, Colossians 2, 6 through 7 told us abounding in thanks thanksgiving. I looked up this word abounding because obviously we know that it's a lot, a lot of thanksgiving. But abounding in the Greek literally translates overflowing. I want to be around somebody that's just overflowing. Why are they so bubbly all the time? Well, why are you so grouchy all the time? Arr, you should have been a pirate. I don't like to be around people that are so happy. They're too happy. Man, give me some happy people. We live in a society that's so down, so discouraged, so locked into the news that they would know good news if it hit them in the face, right? Can I remind you today that the news, somebody reminded me of this the other day, the news makes their money off of advertisements, not off of truth. Doesn't matter what news channel you watch, they make their money off of commercials, well, it is proven over time that nobody tunes in when everything's going right. Why are you sitting and watching the news if everything's going right? Well, everything's fine. I don't need, you know. But as long as they can keep a sense of drama that keeps you tuning in, the more people that tune in, the more they can charge for their commercials. So what are they going to do? Of course they're going to make it bad. 
Of course they're going to give you a stomach ulcer and the diarrhea before the next commercial ever comes on. Yeah, that's what they do. That's what they get paid to do. But God is wanting to raise up a people who are overflowing with thankfulness. Can you believe what's going on in the world today? Yeah, man, isn't it wonderful? Isn't it what man? God is God is so good, man. There's bad things going on, but I just tell you what, God just God's blessed us. That's what we saw in 2020. A lot of bad things were happening, but as bad things were occurring and the enemy was fighting, God's church was on the rise and moving. People were being drawn closer to Him than ever before and pursuing Him. And and look, I'm going to hold on to the good, and I'm going to let the good come out of me. I don't want my staff or my kids or my family to to get tired of being around me because because I'm focused in on what we call reality. I want people to want to be around me because I make them feel better when they're around me. Okay. Somebody say, I want to be overflowing with thanksgiving. And so let's look at this, Luke 6.45, a good person produces good things from the treasure of a good heart, and an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. But I love this last line that I want to point out, what you say flows from what is in your heart. That word flows comes from the same Greek word as the word that says that we are to be abounding in thanksgiving. So what it really is saying is what you say overflows from what is in your heart. It overflows. You can't help it. It just comes out. It's just, you know, if if you let a glass overflow, some of you been, you know, you're 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 getting a drink at the restaurant and you're you got your got your cup pushed up against the thing and you're talking to somebody and before you know it you got you know coca-cola dripping off your your fingertips right because you let your cup overflow you can't do anything to stop it once it's overflowing it's overflowing right and so god wants us to be like that to where we can't help it man we're just man we're just overflowing with thankfulness but i'm convinced that until we open our eyes and look around And until we are intentional at allowing the Holy Spirit to remind us what we have to be thankful for, we're never going to get to that place where it's just overflowing. Somebody say, I want a thankful heart. So the first point is thankfulness is a condition of the heart. The second point is thankfulness is the gateway to God's presence. Thankfulness is the condition of the heart. Thankfulness is the gateway to God's presence. And we saw that here last week. In worship, do you all remember that? Those that were here, we, we hit this, this moment where it's like the gateway to God's presence just flung open. And you could feel the atmosphere just, just change. And whenever we come together, that's why it's so important for us to come together is so that we can be thankful together and access God's presence together. And we got to experience that last week. It was so sweet and so peaceful in this place. I didn't want to do anything else. It was like time to go eat. I was like, I don't want to even want to go eat. I just was enjoying the presence of the Lord. Psalm 100 verse 4 says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. We all want access to God's presence. All of us do. I'm convinced. He created us to desire his presence. He created us that way. He created us to long for intimacy with him. That's why we were created. And so we have this desire to be in God's presence, and we come to church hoping to experience God in a powerful way. But sometimes we come to church and we say, all right, God, I showed up. Put on a show. Right? No. We enter his gates 
We, we don't even have access. We do not have access to God without thanksgiving. God, uh, as I wake up, this it's not, it's not, hey, look, look, I think that we are in a society of people that they go to church if they get up and feel like it. Yeah, I think I, uh, I think I'll go to church today. Oh, tell me I'm wrong. Come on. Now, I know it's not y'all because y'all are here, right? I know it's not you guys. But, oh, yeah, I think, uh, I don't know. You want to go to church today? Uh Uh-uh, man, come on. I remember when I was a kid. Some of you have heard me tell this story uh, in private settings. I'll go ahead and tell it to you today. I remember I was a kid. We had church on Sunday nights back then. Every Sunday night you had church. And uh, sometimes you had church on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, you know, you had revivals and, and, and things like that. Those were the good old days, boy, I tell you what, the good old days. And um, uh, we went to church Sunday morning, and Sunday afternoon, my mom was doing some ironing. And uh, she had this old iron, you know, and uh, she did some ironing, and man, I always wanted, I just thought it was so neat, and she would always tell me, don't touch the iron, you never know when it's going to be hot, and and she would shake that finger at, you know, you know, like, don't touch that iron, you know, and so, but I'd always get as close as I could to that iron. Well, one Sunday afternoon, she was doing some ironing, getting ready for church that night, and um, uh, I walked up, she had left the room, there was that iron. I don't see if it's really hot. And instead of, like, easing into it, I didn't do any none of that. I just went ahead and put my whole hand. And if you know the old irons, they didn't play around. Peeled my hand off of that joker. Blistered. My mom's going to kill me for this. Blistered. Pain, sorrow, agony as a kid. And I remember vividly my mama walking into the room saying, Well, I told you not to touch the iron. I don't care about it, you know, all this. Well, you're still going to church. <laughs> she doctored it. She she helped me out. And, and I went to church that night because that's what you do. You go to church. Didn't matter if you felt like it or not. You know why? Because we had something to be thankful for. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. There's something within us that says, God, I recognize what you've done for me. I recognize what you've done for my family. And all to you, I owe. Where has that gone in the church today? I value that experience because it taught me something. Not to not touch the iron, which I never did again. In fact, I don't iron to this day. But (laughs) it taught me that there is priority There is priority placed on the house of God. All to him I owe. Who am I to think that he should make it convenient for me? All to him I owe. Somebody say, all to him I owe. Thankfulness is the gates, is is the entry point to his gates. We should get up on Sundays and say, God, I am thankful for the opportunity that I have to go to the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. It shouldn't be a chore. It should be a pleasure. And so we have that. I believe God's wanting to restore that. Not only church, but also on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, when you're getting ready to go to work, you have access to God's presence, but you cannot access that presence without first giving thanks. Not wah, 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 snooze, right? Wah, 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 snooze. And the third snooze you get them like, oh, I can't believe i got to get up and go to work today. You know? No, 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 no. no. God, I'm thankful for the opportunity that I have, even when you don't feel like it. 
<laughs> I'm thankful for the opportunity that I have to go to work today. Thank you for my job. Thank you for my boss. Thank you for my kids that take all my money. Thank you for the blessings that you have given me, right? That is the way that we enter his gates. All right, Philippians 4, 6 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. We talked about this some last week. Nobody wants uh, a sob story before they're asked for something. They've proven this. Look, I'm not moved. Now, this is probably going to get me in trouble. I'm not moved by commercials that play on your emotions to try to get you to give something. For instance, the... um, pet adoption commercial that has Sarah McLaughlin singing in the arms of an angel trying to, you know, I thought it was like a child adoption, like, man, this is like, you know, child children that are are going to die on the streets and everything, and it ends up being a pet adoption, you know, which is fine. We've got a pet now. And and so, but, but, but look, I'm not moved by things like that. You know what I'm moved by? Success stories. I'm moved by success stories. I'm moved like our comedian came last month and, and gave a success story. I'm, I'm like, hey, that's something I could be a part of because, because I, that's how we're moved. And, and it's like this when we come to God. I don't think God wants to hear us, oh, God, you know my needs, and you know I'm not going to make it. No, no, we have some. There are times where maybe that's appropriate. But I think it's, I think it's better when we go into God's presence. Hey, God, I want to thank you for giving me breath to breathe today, first of all. I want to thank you for giving me a wife I'm thankful for you giving me kids. I'm thankful that you gave me a job. Now, now, God, I have this, uh, I have this one need that I have, but I, I don't want to start. That's why Jesus said that we start our prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. Right? right? And so it's, 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 why, don't we, why don't we approach God like that? Instead of whining and complaining all the time, why don't we start with thankfulness? giving him thanks for what he has done. And then it says, it says that we're not to be anxious about anything. For one thing, whenever you're thankful about everything, it's hard to be anxious about everything. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Somebody say, I want a thankful heart. Number one, thankfulness is a condition of the heart. Number two, thankfulness is the gateway to God's presence. And finally today, Number three, thankfulness is the key to peace. Thankfulness is the key to peace. I'm convinced in the society that we live in that truly is tormented by the devil, the prince of this world, right? We live in a society that God's people are going to have to learn how to create a sub-atmosphere of peace. There may be hell going on all around you, but somehow you have a sub-atmosphere of God's peace where we get to this state where none of these things happening around me move me. There may be hell going all around me, but I shall not. I shall not be moved. Why? Because I have peace. Peace is not the absence of problems. Peace is learning to trust God in the midst of your problems. Philippians 4, 6 through 7 says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. We covered that. It says, and The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Why aren't you, you I've seen with Miss Verna, we love using her. She went through hell in her body. 
and, and went through treatments and had cancer and, and two times, right? And you'd see her, and she'd be all coming in, walking in the door singing. Why aren't you, why aren't you discouraged? I, I ain't got time to be discouraged. Why? Because I'm thankful for every day that God has given me. And I'm thankful for every opportunity that he's given. And we, and we, we start to embrace the things that God has given us. And what happens? It guards your heart and your mind that even though you may be walking through some of the most dangerous fires that you've ever walked through, there's a peace of God that says, I will not be burned. Well, that doesn't make sense. doesn't matter. God's guarding. You're not thinking logically. Yes, God's guarding your heart and your mind. Well, it doesn't make sense. Yes, God's guarding your heart and mind. Sometimes we don't need to think logically. Let that soak in this morning. Sometimes you don't need to think logically. We do not serve a logical God. We serve a supernatural, he can do whatever he wants to, how he wants to, when he wants to kind of God. And he doesn't have to work within logic to do it. And so the peace of God that guards our hearts and our minds is initiated by thankfulness. The only time we ever hear this scripture is at funerals. Oh, brother, just be encouraged that the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts, your minds in Christ Jesus. But we never hear the first part, that if you're not anxious about anything and you make your request known to God with thanksgiving, then, then is when God's peace which surpasses all your own natural understanding. You're not going to always understand what you're going through. Why me, God? Why? I tithe. I go to church. Uh, I don't cuss. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I don't. I don't. I don't go to the boats. I don't. I don't. Do, and wh- why me, God? No, no, no. It, it, you don't have to understand it. True peace guards your hearts and your minds in the midst of the fire, the flood. No matter what's going on in your life, it's the peace of God that kept Jesus asleep on the bottom of the boat whenever the disciples thought that they were about to drown. He was asleep with his head on a pillow in the bottom of the boat. God's peace can guard you in the midst of the most devastating trials of your life. Would you stand with me this morning? Number one, thankfulness is a condition of the heart. God wants us to have a thankful heart. Th- number two, thankfulness is the gateway to God's presence. And number three, thankfulness is the key to God's peace in your life. I believe that God wants us to have a thankful heart, and I believe he wants to, us to be overflowing with thankfulness, not just on Thanksgiving, but all the time. Amen. On the good days, on the bad days, and all the in-between days, let us have a thankful heart. Father, we thank you for this day. God, we're thankful for your word. God, we're thankful for the price that you paid for us so that we could have a thankful heart. God, I pray in Jesus' name that you fill every person under the sound of my voice with a sense of thankfulness and thanksgiving. God, I pray that we will look around, that we will see, God, all that we have to be thankful for. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you will help us to literally overflow with thanksgiving and we thank you for that if there's anyone under the sound of my voice that you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior then listen he wants to he wants today to be your opportunity he gave his life on the cross of Calvary and he was resurrected three days later so that you could spend eternity with him and so that even in the midst of the hardest of days You have something to hang on to and something to be thankful for. So if you're here today, I want us to all pray this prayer. And and those that are watching, I want you to pray this prayer. And I want you to mean it with all of your heart. And today could be the beginning 
of a new era for you. Today could be a new beginning for you to realize that you have so much to be thankful for. Would you pray, dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I'm thankful that you rose from the dead and that you live forever. Today, I ask you to forgive me, wash me, make me brand new. Today, I'm asking you to be my Lord and my Savior, my very best friend. Help me to always be thankful for who you are and for what you've done in my life. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen. Would you give the Lord praise for that this morning? If you prayed that prayer and you're here today, do not leave without telling us that you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you're watching, make sure to send us a comment and say, I received Jesus today. God bless you. Happy Thanksgiving, and we'll see you next Sunday. As we go this morning, thank you for being here to our guests. Uh, hopefully, at the seat beside you, you'll find a card that says connect with you. We would love for you to fill that out. Drop it in the baskets to my right as you get ready to leave. Uh, to everyone else, thanks for being here. Have an awesome Thanksgiving week. Remember, no church uh, Wednesday night. And then tonight at 5, uh, you're welcome to uh, go to Life Builders Restoration Church, uh, which is uh, across uh, town off of Jackson Street. So y'all have a great week. God bless you.